you are using inducements wrong. It's so frustrating for me to see that every single one of you traders don't understand the difference between a valid and invalid inducement. In this video, I will make sure to clarify this for once and for all. First off, we are going to discuss what actually is an inducement. Second of all, we are going to discuss the difference between a valid and an invalid inducement. Thirdly, we are going to discuss how and when to see if there's actual liquidity being engineered below or above that single inducement. And last but not least, I will be providing you guys with both a valid example of an inducement and also an invalid example of an inducement live on the charts for Bitcoin. Now let's first go over some theory to discuss what actually is an inducement. And this is fairly, fairly simple. Basically, whenever we, for example, form a bit of a demand area, for example, right over here, and we form this demand, right and it will be should be acting as support an inducement is basically a front run of a certain demand or supply area or of a certain breaker block just a regular support or resistance level so let's say this entire area over here is our support for bitcoin an inducement would be that price instead of tapping into that support and bouncing towards the upside instead it's going to front run that support area bounce towards the upside and later on take out that low take out that inducement and this low over here is what we call the inducement of that support area before reversing towards the upside now why is an inducement like this so extremely important because an inducement is basically making sure that we are engineering liquidity above a support area or inside of a support area or below or inside of a resistance area now we know and this is important to realize that we always want to enter where other people are getting stopped out aka we always want to enter where there's a lot of liquidity on the chart why so because the market makers are doing the exact same. The market makers are creating these inducements in order to engineer liquidity and they will be using that liquidity to fill their orders. They can identify support or resistance level, but if there's not enough liquidity available for them to be able to fill their orders, they're never going to be able to fill those orders. So they will never be able to reverse the price after tapping into that support or resistance level. Which is why you have to understand that a support or resistance level doesn't mean shit if there's not a valid inducement engineering liquidity inside of the support or resistance level that smart money can use to fill their orders. So you can be able to identify any support or resistance level on the chart if you want to, but if there's no valid inducement confirming that area of support or resistance for a potential reversal, your trade will still be extremely low probability. Now, this is first off why it's so important to be able to recognize inducements. But this brings me to the second topic, and that's the difference between a valid and invalid inducement. Because everyone, and I mean literally everyone, that is able to identify a support or resistance level is also able to look at a chart and see if price is indeed front running that support level, right? or is maybe actually tapping into it but there's a difference between certain price behavior that is creating a valid inducement and an invalid inducement because i've been explaining this many many times and if you don't understand the liquidity concept yet make sure to check out my other videos on my youtube channel but liquidity which is pivotal for a valid inducement of course is not as simple as just marking out a high or a low right liquidity is being engineered by certain price action from the past and the human reaction to that price action and therefore they're engineering liquidity below certain lows and above certain highs now let's say price is front running that support level and we bounce and then we form a lower high over here by forming this lower high is there actual liquidity being engineered over here beneath this low once again, if you don't understand this, make sure to check out one of my YouTube videos. I've been going over this again and again and again. In my opinion, by forming just a lower high after a bit of a bounce, we are not necessarily engineering a lot of liquidity beneath this low. And therefore, this inducement is not valid. Instead, what, what is likely to happen is to sweep that low, that fake inducement, and then just to continue towards the upside to go for the stop losses beneath the low right over here. 
Now you're probably wondering, okay, yep, but what in that case is a valid inducement? Now let's say we front run the support level, right? And we can just invert the chart or we front run this resistance level. We need to engineer liquidity beneath that front run in order for it to be a valid inducement. Otherwise, once again, remember, smart money will not be able to fill their orders. So what should price be doing? It should be behaving in a certain manner, whereas they are trapping people into opening up long positions, for example, over here, and to place their stop loss beneath a low over here, targeting higher levels. Now, this is an invalid long position that they're opening because what we are looking at over here is a fake break of structure. And more locally, what we are looking at over here is a fake break of structure. Why are these fake break of structures? Once again, check out some other YouTube videos where I go over fake and valid break of structures. But these are fake break of structures because we are breaking through unsignificant highs on the chart but retail traders will think that these are valid break of structures they will jump into long positions over here place their stop loss beneath a low targeting higher levels now since they are placing their stop loss beneath this low based off previous price section we are engineering liquidity beneath this low and therefore this low this front run of the support level over here is turning into a valid inducement now if price is now going to sweep that inducement into this demand area this should be providing a lovely long opportunity with our stop loss beneath the demand area and as long as we have a drawn liquidity towards the opposite side of the chart we are creating a high probability inducement and therefore a high probability support area and therefore a high probability long setup so now we've discussed what actually is an inducement What's the difference between a valid and invalid inducement? And how can we identify if there's actual liquidity being engineered beneath or above that inducement in order for that inducement to be valid? Now let's move over to two real life examples on the Bitcoin chart with both a valid inducement and also an invalid inducement. And let's see how these trades play it out. Okay guys, what we're looking at over here is a high probability supply area, right? We swept important liquidity while forming this supply. We had a beautiful bearish breakaway gap over here beneath that supply, right? We broke structure to the downside while forming that supply. So we have a high probability supply area. The only thing that is missing for the supply area in order to be able to trade the supply area is a valid inducement. Now look at the chart over here and figure out for yourself based on a one hourly time frame, if this high over here is a valid inducement for the supply area. I'm going to give you guys four or five seconds. Have a look at the chart yourself. And the answer to this question, guys, is that this is not a valid inducement, of course. This is just a regular high that we create. But after creating this high, we have lows over here, right over here. We have another low over here and another low over here that we had to be breaking through to the downside in order to actually be trapping people into shorts and for them to be able to place a stop loss above this high and therefore to make this inducement a valid one. But instead of sweeping these lows and creating a valid inducement, we are just constantly grinding higher and not engineering any liquidity above this inducement and therefore smart money would never be able to fill their orders in that supply and reverse the price towards the downside, right? When we go back to the example that I explained in a bullish manner like this, this way it's a lot more clear, right? This is exactly the example that I explained. This is just a front run, a lower high, and now we are going to form a lower low. What we should have been seeing instead after forming this low is to form a bit of a higher high, trap people into longs, and then sweep that low to reverse the price towards the upside. Now, what happens now in this case, we can see the demand or supply, whatever you want to call it, if we inverse the chart back towards the upside, the supply did not act as any resistance and instead we broke right through it and all of the people that are not able to identify the difference between a valid and invalid inducement over here and still shorted this supply area because it looked oh so clean they all got wrecked now this is once again a beautiful example why it's so important to understand the difference between a valid and invalid inducement now let's move over to an example where we actually see a valid inducement creating a valid trade setup Okay guys, for this example, instead of using a supplier demand, we are going to use a breaker block as you can see over here. Very clean structure on Bitcoin. We sweep an important liquidity high, then we break towards the downside. We get ourselves a valid break of structure to the downside because this low 
turn significant to break after we create a higher high over here compared to this high the brotherhood is low now by breaking towards the downside over here we create a very nice bearish breaker block and this high over here is a valid inducement why so because after forming this front run of the breaker block and forming this lower high we form a lower low besides the fact that we have a valid break of structure over here we have a fake break of structure over here because we break through an insignificant low now a lot of people fomo into shorts upon this push to the downside or they jump into shorts upon the pullback and what high will they be using to cover their stop loss get into the mind of the retail traders they are greedy creatures they will be using the high over here to cover their stop loss they are putting their stop loss exactly where we have this high probability breaker block now let's see how this trade played out upon this beautiful valid inducement of this high probability breaker block we are going to play the chart and eventually we can see that it got filled we swept the inducement into that bearish breaker block and eventually we pushed towards lower prices to the downside offering a beautiful short trade based off a valid inducement below a valid resistance area upon valid price action and liquidity confirmations